Hello and welcome back to Hearthstone, another week of Tavern Brawl. And this week we have the Great Summoner competition. Now this week's actually a pretty interesting one. One of the better ones Blizzard has done so far, so fairly impressed by that. And the theme is whenever you cast a spell, you'll summon a minion of the same mana cost. And as you can imagine, this has led to a lot of changes in the current decks rather than just using already existing meta stuff, looking at you banana brawl. So yeah, spell heavy decks, getting minions at the same cost, it's leading to a lot of crazy interactions, minions you don't usually see, spells you don't usually see. As you can see by looking at my deck on the right hand side, we have some rather bizarre things in here like Recycle. It's actually a pretty good card in this format. You get a 6 drop, you get to remove one of your opponent's minions, put it back in the deck. Something like Tree of Life as well can get you strange stuff like King Crush. Um, Trogzar makes his appearance, great for countering spells because everyone's running just really really spell intense decks. Soul of the Forest of course, you're getting big minions out if you innervate coin into Soul of the Forest, you've got three minions, turn one with Soul of the Forest on them. As you can imagine, leads to pretty crazy things with Druid specifically, just because of the ramp cards. So I'll try and demonstrate that a bit, we'll see how the games go, and hopefully you see some of the ridiculous interactions that can happen in this format. So game one versus a mage then. Lots of people seem to default to mage for this challenge because they think, oh, spell decks, mage must be great, but my experience suggests mage actually isn't that strong. Druid and priest seem to be running rampant throughout this. So we'll toss away these, we'll keep power of the will because it's great early if you coin into it. Hopefully we get something that can innervate as well, or a soul of the forest. Well there's a soul of the forest, that's nice, but no innervate unfortunately. I might see our opponent do something like Arcane Missile's face. Yeah, there it is. Just to get the minion on board. Well, that's okay. We can deal with that. Still no Innervate for us, unfortunately. So we could coin Power of the Wild here, which would be relatively effective, I suppose. It's not really the two drop I wanted, but okay, we'll start with that. We'll have Wild Growth next turn, which is a nice ramp. Gets us a two mana cost minion as well. Hopefully we get something a little better than the Patient Assassin. Well, he takes a flame cannon, so good job for him, I suppose. Let's accomplish something. Mana Wraith. That's okay. I'll just finish it though. He might fire blast here, which is a little bit slow. This format's pretty fast because you get the tempo from spells and the minions to boot, so. So we have our swipe, which works nicely here. Or we can bite, but I think we will just swipe. And should probably swipe the mana worm that has the potential to grow quite a lot. I got Taz Dingo, he's a nice 4 drop to pick up. Next turn we can bite this if we have to, and we have Trogzar coming up soon too, which really, really dominates in this format. He's very difficult to deal with. Oh, that's a nasty one. Might have to bite that instead. I think we will do exactly that. Okay, he gets Ancient Mage, not very good. Can pretty safely ignore that. So at this point I think we can just take out this bomber. He can't trade with a mage here, which isn't great for us, but well, he uses the mech worker instead. Probably a little bit of a mistake. He could have used the ancient mage and have it live, so slight misplay on his side. One shot, one kill. None of these are threatening in any way, so I'm not really too concerned. So 
So I think this turn we're just going to mark the little this and then combo up Soul of the Forest. The fun part about Soul of the Forest is it spawns the minion first, the 4 drop, and then gives it Soul of the Forest, so we'll have 3 minions here with it. Get Ogre Mage, that's reasonable. And we can use our Mogachan here to start chipping away at these mirror images. We have our Trogzor, and the two Nourishes should go the extra mile as well, so we're looking in good shape. He gets Hungry Dragon, one of the better four drops, besides perhaps Pit Lord, although I think they're the same stats. Lucky for him. Drawing with the Acolyte, that's good for him as well. Fortunately we have no more board clear here. We draw the Starfire, which is pretty nice. Ready. The problem with playing Trogzor here is he'll just kill it. So perhaps we just Starfire the Hungry Dragon. We have the spell damage from the Ogre Magi, which lets us one shot it. Oh, and we got Hogger as well, that's a nice pickup. So I think here we can just... Kill off this. The Acolyte's on 1 HP anyway, so we don't really need to bother with that too much. Uh -huh. If we see a Flame Strike here, I think most mage decks are running it. I guess he doesn't have it. Maybe an obvious Flame Strike here. Just goes with a double Ice Lance to kill Hogger, which I'm fine with. One drops aren't too impactful. Could be a counter spell, it's possible. We can try the Savage Roar, test for counter spell. There it is, no surprises there. So I think now we'll just draw some cards, get a 5 drop up as well. Oof, it's not the 5 drop I want you to see. Terrible. Weapon. Oh well, take what we're given, I suppose. Picked up a swipe in Starfall. Nice amount of clear there if we drop some low mana cost spells. Still have this Trogzor in reserve as well. Haven't had a great opportunity to play him yet. You really need to throw him in when he can't be killed by your opponent's minions, because they also can't answer him with spells or they just spawn more Trogs. So he really is a creature where you play him at the right moment and he can pretty much win the game by himself. But play him at the wrong moment and they just trade minions and you get nowhere. He plays Frost Nova which stalls me out a bit but also gets him this nice over brute. We've lost our spell power so the Starfall isn't quite as effective anymore. Suppose we can swipe here, get rid of the ogre. Ugh, not a terrible four drop. We could Starfall clear the board entirely. He only has one card left. I think it's probably worth it. Yeah, yeah, you've gotta be kidding me! Job done. Well, that's it's a good minion, but I suppose it really doesn't matter that too much, because Troxar is literally the only minion in our deck right now. Everything else is spells, 29 spells, 1 trogs are. So the downside to him isn't going to affect us too much. He's drawing here, gets a Void Terror, doesn't do much. You shall not a bunch of zero attack taunts, just stalling out. Another fireball, gets rid of the Avenger Co. So, this could be a turn for Trogzor. He doesn't have the power on the field to kill it if we start taking some of these minions out. Power of the Weld's also probably a good bet. Savage Roar, perhaps. Which Savage Roar Trogzor? So we can go here. Mm -hmm. 
get through these frustrating taunts. Okay. He shouldn't have much way to deal with that cleanly. He only has one card. Any spell he casts is going to kill that. And also spawn a trog. So unless he's running charger minions in the deck, which is very, very unlikely. I hear you got a problem. And there's flame strike. Honestly, doesn't do very much. Well, I suppose it does a fair amount. He gets to ping this away now. But again, he's very low on cards. We have the opportunity to draw more here with nourished. I think we will do. Just draw, draw, draw. Oh. It's, a, it's not really the five drop I wanted, but okay. He is pretty terrible. Oh, well, what can you do? We can't actually spawn two minions of the Weld Growth. We get the two mana cost and then the excess mana card spawns another minion for us, which is pretty nice. We can finish up with the power of the weld. Give everything plus one plus one. You might feel a little... Hopefully there's not another flame strike in there. No Only two cards. Oh, polymorph and target dummy. That's gonna sting. In flames. It's not a great three drop to get either. Running out of luck on his side. So this could be another counter spell. I'd say it's pretty likely. So we can test with the Mark of the Wilds. If it goes through we can use this Trent. Or well, using the one I cheat is probably better. So what do we want to buff? I suppose we try and buff the Recombobulator. Counter spell is expected. Predictable if anything. It's an obvious card to run in this format. So the forest good here. It does leave us four mana we can't do anything with. Maybe we should spend the recycle, be a bit more efficient. Okay, we're looking in pretty good shape here. Handful of cards, board full of minions, opponent has nothing. Even if he flame strikes here, it's probably not going to affect too much. Looks like he does not have the flame strike. And there we go. You can see the druid combos work really nicely. High mana cost spells, draw you cards, spawn big minions, you can just keep going. So we'll try another game with the same deck, see how that goes then. Okay, we're against a priest this time. In my experience, priest is one of the better ones, so we could be in for a rough ride here unless we get a good opening hand. And this is not the opening hand I wanted, so we'll replace all of these. Power of the Weld, a decent pickup. Unfortunately, no coin for us, which puts us at a disadvantage because coin does in fact count as a spell. So you get either a target dummy or a wisp from that. It's minor, but in the druid buff base with Power of the Wild and Soul of the Forest is actually very relevant. Oh, great one drop pick up on his side as well. And the shield. Oh, and another one. Yeah, we're... We're not looking good here. That's not what I wanted to see. I need to spawn the panther. We're going to be taking a lot of damage here though. Really unfortunate. Two dust owls, what are the odds? Don't even know how many one drops there are. So chances are he has removal spells here. And he's just gonna damage us out of the game with these dust devils. The lack of overload on them just means they can completely crush anything. He's taking his time, that's for sure. Shadow word pain, possibly. 
There it is. I think it's the auto barber. Might have been nice if we got an explosive sheep. I tried just one dust devil, but we have just taken 10 damage. We really don't have very many options here besides spawning. Yeah, another panther. This guy is not useful. You can see Valen's chosen on that. Another power word shield, not quite as bad, but we still don't really don't have any way of dealing with it. And it's very, very quickly making a mincemeat of Malfurion's face. Yeah, he looks to go full face, as expected. Oh, no, he decides to take one of them out. Four attack here. We have no mark of nature on the deck. I actually cut it because I didn't think it was doing well enough. Yeah, it's pretty much game over for us. Well, that can happen. The um, double dust devils and no spells on our side that were really very usable was just way too much. But yeah, super fast format if you get lucky. We'll have one more try then, see if we run into another priest with two dust devils. Warlock this time. I don't believe Warlock would be very good here because most of the Warlock spells are actually quite bad. Now we are on coin so I'm going to keep one soul of the forest. If we get an innervate we can do coin innervate soul of the forest and that's a crazy combo and we do get it so we're looking really nice here. It's going to be turn one, three minions with Soul of the Forest. Very, very difficult for a Warlock to deal with. Difficult for anyone to deal with, really. There we are. Crazy turn one combos. He just demon fires this, but it's just gonna spawn. Um, another trend here, but the explosive sheep's actually a good pickup for him. Because it will just kill the trend and the wisp. I'm gonna swing face here. And blow this up, I suppose. Oh, and the um, wisp even spawns first. Because it was played first. So that was a mistake. I should have considered the death rattle order. We could have had an extra Trent right now. You might feel a little well, remember oh, kids, death rattles play on the order. They're played onto the board. Don't get caught out like I did. Should have been an unlosable position for us, but him getting the sheep and then me messing up that turn so much is really throwing things. So we could Wrath here, or we could Bait. Bait gets us the 4 drop, but we can Wrath and Mark of the Wild. Although no, we actually can't Mark of the Wild this, so we'd have to hope that we get something good on the Wrath. I think we'll just Bait instead, play it safe. I won't bother trading because you can't target that with spells anyway. Unless he hellfires, which kills his own minion, so meh, whatever. Yeah, it makes almost no difference. We could wrath now, or we could just trade the Trent. 
Or I think we'll Wrath. Get the minion as well. No point in trading, we don't need to. I think I'll play the Mark of the Weld as well. Now Hellfire deals 3 damage, so we can probably buff this Trent out of Hellfire range in case he plays a second one. Sorcerer's Apprentice, one of the better 2 drops you can get here. Although, for spells that have their cost reduced, you actually do get the reduced minions. Like if we played Savage Roar, we'd now only get a 2 drop rather than a 3 drop. In the same vein, Lotheb, which increases the mana cost of minions, also increases the... Increases the mana cost of spells, rather, also increases the minions that you get from it. So Lotheb's actually not too good here, unless you play him exactly on curve. So he gets the 4 with Implosion. It's a little unfortunate, but here we have 4, 7 damage, Savage Roar gives us an extra 6, and then we can bite for lethal, so it looks like this game is over. We get the Blade Master as well, which is nice. Battle Cry doesn't go off, so he's an insane 3-drop. But it doesn't matter because we win anyway. Well, this week's Tavern Brawl is actually really fun. I can't criticise too much. Um, druid combos are pretty insane. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more people play Druid because they seem pretty unstoppable. Priests are also kind of crazy because they have so many removal spells. Things like Pain and Death and Smite and Holy Nova and Light Bomb. And then on turn 10 they can mind control you and either get a Sea Giant or Deathwing. Which just swings the game entirely. But because of how fast this format is you often don't get to turn 10 anyway. You can see some of the Druid combos are just like completely clean sweep. And then the way that Priest got the two Dust Devils on me, again just 5 turns the game is over. But it's really fun because we get to see a lot of decks that aren't usually in the um, constructed meta. We get to play with cards that we don't always play with. I mean, so many of the cards in this deck are just never seen in Constructed. And we can count through. I mean, Innervate's used. Claw's not. Power of, the uh, Power of the Weld's not. Mark of the Weld's not. Weld Growth is used. Wrath's used. Savage Roar's used. Bite's not used. Poison Seeds is not used. Soul of the Forest is not used. Swipe is used. Nourish is not used that much. Some decks do run it. It's kind of here their card for people. Same with Starfall, it used to be fairly popular, don't see it so much anymore. Recycle of course is never used, it's usually terrible, terrible card and constructed. But here it's actually quite good, just because the 6 drop you get from it. Same deal with Starfire, usually just way too slow, but because you get the 6 drop here it's great. Trogzor of course just completely crushes here, nobody plays him constructed though because he's too slow. And we didn't get to see a Tree of Life play, but and a lot of the games actually does become relevant, like you can play Tree of Life reasonably as a card to get a 9-drop. And a lot of the 9-drops are quite good, you can get something like Ysera off of this. So, these kind of cards that we'd see that are just terrible in Constructed actually become really good here. When you took this deck into Constructed, you would get nowhere at all, but in the Summoner competition it's ridiculous. So, yeah, it's done a good job of mixing things up, I'm pretty impressed by what's come this week. It's Probably the best one so far in my opinion. I mean something like the Banana Brawl was really quite weak because the um, Flame Waker Mage was just completely dominating it, but yeah, this one definitely mixes things up, so hopefully next week we see something just as interesting as this, if not more so, and we'll see how far Blizzard can push and they can outdo themselves consistently. So thanks for watching then and until next week. <laughs>